brothers and sisters. Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made. And uh, we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And uh, in today's Bible study lesson, we are going to be uh, answering this one very confusing question. And when I say confusing, it's really confusing. Now, this is a question. Do gay people go to heaven? Do gay people go to heaven? And uh, first, I want to give a disclaimer on this uh, on this uh, teaching that we're going to learn today, uh, I'm not, I'm not doing this to, you know, to condemn anyone or <laughs> that's not my work. No, the purpose of this uh, teaching is so that we can answer using a biblical understanding of this very gender sensitive, you know, gender related sensitive issue. And uh, of course, in this teaching, we reject all forms of hatred and discrimination against the LGBTQ. And uh, that's our purpose is not to condemn anyone. It's just to have a biblical understanding of uh, what uh, this is all about. All right. So uh, I hope you're in a comfortable seat and uh, you've got a pen and notebook and your Bible. And uh, let's get started. right now the question of whether gay people go to heaven or hell is much discussed today and there is a lot of confusion surrounding this issue and also on one side uh, are churches that teach that homosexuality is blessed by God and on the other side are churches that condemn all homosexual thoughts and actions as deserving of eternal judgment So is being gay a ticket to heaven or hell? First, let me give a clarification. Our world labels people according to their weaknesses, sin tendencies and addictions or sexual inclinations. And when we do that, we create an adversarial us versus them position. And we begin to see people in categories rather than as individuals and this is dangerous. And when we ask if gay people go to heaven or hell, we may be using the label gay rather than considering the individual who may be struggling with temptation or confused about his or her sexual identity. For the purposes of uh, this teaching, we will uh, define gay as a practicing a homosexual lifestyle so first and foremost let's 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 start from the beginning when god created human beings he designed them male and female in his own image genesis 1 verse 27 the bible says so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them And of course, we see Adam and Eve were created perfect and God blessed their physical union in their their first marriage. Genesis 1.28, it says, And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You see? So... Homosexuality was not part of God's creation. And when the first man and woman chose to disobey God's command, sin entered the world. The Bible tells us in Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned, everyone. Everyone. It doesn't mean... It doesn't matter what kind of small sin you're doing and others have been doing a bigger one. We have all sinned, everyone. You, me, everybody. And with that sin came brokenness of all kinds. Thorns, tornadoes, drought, sicknesses, diseases, cruelty, and sexual distortions. 
And since that time, every human has been born with a sin nature. And our natural selves demand the right to be our own gods. And uh, when we desire something contrary to the will of uh, will of God, the desire itself becomes sinful. The Bible tells us in the book of James, uh, 1 verse 13 to 15, it tells us, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So, are you seeing that? So you can say that uh, God is tempting you. We may sin in different ways, but it is all sin. Some have an overwhelming desire to lie. Some have an, are unfaithful to their spouse. Some may overcome outward sins and are puffed up with arrogance. And some may be tempted to engage in sexual acts with their own gender. It is all sin. It is all unacceptable to God and we all need a savior. God, who is our creator, could have wiped up, wiped out all the human race and started over. He owes us nothing. Because of our high treason against our creator, we all deserve hell. Heaven is perfect and we are not. We are disallowed from God's presence. In his great love, God made a way that we sinners can be made righteous. Think about Ephesians 2, 4 and 5. The Bible says, But God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, hath he quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Jesus, who is the Son of God, offered himself as a substitute on the cross, thereby taking the punishment that we deserve. John 10, 18 says, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down for myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my Father. You see, Jesus was, you may see, say he was killed, but no, he laid his life for us. Nobody could take it from him. No, he laid his life for us. Okay? And 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. And we understand that God poured out his wrath against sin upon his own son, so that those who trust in that sacrifice can have their sins transferred to his account. Second, uh, I mean, sorry, Colossians 2.14 says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. You see the point? So in exchange, the righteousness of Christ is imputed to us. God then declared that whosoever trusts in Jesus as their Lord and Savior will be granted eternal life in heaven. Hmm? John 3, 16 to 18 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And verse 18 gives us a clear picture. He says, He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You are condemned if you don't believe in that begotten Son. And that divide, uh, that divine exchange, our old life for his new one, brings about transformation from the inside out. We are transformed from inside out. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So this one tells us if anyone is in Christ or he or she becomes a new creature, 
all the sin, selfishness, pride, perversion that were part of our lives before that moment are wiped clean and we are pronounced righteous before God. Psalms 103 verse 12 He says, As far as the east is far from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. God then takes on the task of conforming us to his image, to the image of Jesus Christ. After we're saved, now he tries to change us into the image of Christ. Romans 8.29 The Bible says, For whom did he foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he, he might be the firstborn among many brethren. We are not saved from hell to continue in the same sins Jesus died for. We are saved so that we can become all God designed us to be. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. That includes renouncing our past and sinful tendencies and embracing the wholeness or the wholeness that we are created to experience. So, what's our bottom line? What's, what's the conclusion of all this matter? To answer this specific question about whether gay people go to heaven or hell, we can substitute the words gay, gay people with the other sin groups. Do adulterers go to heaven or hell? Do kleptomaniacs go to heaven or hell? Do prostitutes go to heaven or hell? And Paul answers these questions clearly in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. He says, Know ye not? 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. 6 verse 9 and 10. He says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, or adulterers, nor effeminate, effeminate, nor abuses or themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Do you see? Do you see this? So people who live in Unrepentant sin have no place in God's kingdom. Those who practice sexual sin, including homosexuality, are on that list. Paul, anticipating objections, says, uh, do not be deceived. Think about verse 10. He says, do not be deceived. These people, they have no place in the kingdom. But then Paul goes on and, uh, and says, in 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 11, And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Are you seeing the point here? Such were some of you, but you are washed. Notice the abrupt turn around with the word, but. The church that Paul was addressing had members who in the past had practiced those very sins but uh, when uh, they trusted Jesus everything changed their loyalty changed their nature changed their action changed no one is exempt from God's righteous judgment on sin everybody will face that if they don't repent the Bible says in Romans 6.23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord so no one is exempt from also his offer of forgiveness and transformation. You're not exempt from being a sinner and you're not exempt from getting salvation. Everybody can get salvation. Right? When we surrender our lives to Christ, we must let go of all that defined us in our sinful state. Jesus said, if if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9.23 So we must die to our own old sinful lifestyle and we must die to our right to be our own boss and we must die to those desires in us that violate God's righteous decrees. 
gay people go to either heaven or hell on the same basis that drunkards, liars, haters, self-righteous church people go to either heaven or hell. And our final destination depends on what you have done. Uh, our final destination, sorry, depends on uh, not on what you have done, but on how we responded to Jesus' sacrifice on our behalf. Unrepentant sinners will die in their sin and be judged accordingly. Repentant sinners are forgiven in Christ. And when we receive him as Lord, he becomes our final authority. So to be a Christian, it means that we now strive to model our lives after his perfect one. And we want to please him more than we want to please ourselves. Matthew 10, 37-38, it tells us, he that loveth the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. You seeing this now? And there is no question that homosexual acts are displeasing to him. Just as heterosexual sin is displeasing to him. And if we insist on living a gay lifestyle, as if being gay was our identity, we are turning our backs on Christ's sacrifice. We cannot expect God to simply overlook us in the very sins that put Jesus on the cross. And many people who are same-sex uh, attracted have come to faith in Christ and in so doing, they have surrendered that particular temptation to him. Some go on to marry and live in Christ-honoring heterosexual marriages and others choose celibacy, finding the fulfillment they need in uh, intimacy with God. So, same-sex attracted Christians go to heaven um, the same way, the exact same way heterosexual Christians go to heaven by exercising faith in Christ, renouncing their past, and embracing the life of holiness God desires for his children. 1 Peter 15 to 16, it tells us, But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And I'll clear with this one more verse. Hebrews 12 verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. <sighs> and that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. I know it was tough, <laughs> even to me, uh, just to speak about this. is a, It's a very sensitive topic. But I uh, hope it was a blessing to you. You can always download uh, these productions so that you can listen later or share to your friends and family. And also favorite and subscribe to our channels to always know whenever we post a new Bible study lesson. Otherwise, hope to see you soon in the next one. <laughs>